Hello. Uh, last time we actually built our test track, and uh, in this part we're going to be going through and we're actually going to be building it. One quick thing that I forgot to mention, I, when you're actually making your track, um, I, this is the good thing about making all these parts like a day after each other is that you remember everything that you forgot um, to say. So if we have our plane and we have our curve and we... I. So we, uh, sorry, uh, let me do some, uh, shift right click is to move around this 3D cursor. Anyways, uh, if we were to add, go to the modifiers panel, add an array, and then add a curve modifier, uh, you'll notice, and then we get it to our busy curve, you notice if we move this around, strange stuff starts, starts happening. Um, but if we move around this curve, we also have strange stuff happening. So you have to scale this curve and rotate it. I, uh, sorry, actually, really, really, let me see, so if I'm, oh yeah, yeah, so yeah, here, here's, here's what I was getting at, uh, this is why busy curves can be annoying sometimes, so I move the curve, and that, that, that it's just doing weird stuff, right, like, that's, that's not what we want, um, so what you have to do is you have to go in here, and then you can grab it, in edit mode on your curve, and then you can G to grab it along, and then it works normally. So uh, if you have, say, your, if you add your plane in a different place, and then you have your curve in a different place, and you try to also have this, have an array, and then have a curve modifier and go into that same curve, you can see it's gonna, it's gonna deform weirdly for both of them. Um, but also if you, you know, scale this out, rotate it, and you can see how it's, how it's affecting them. Um, oh, and what, what I actually wanted to say is that you can, uh, you know, how we're saying control T is to tilt, you know, and that's how you get it tilting. You can also, uh, alt S here to scale. And so that can be useful when you have maybe this wide, and then you go here and this is going to be small. And then if we increase this array, you can see it getting progressively smaller. So that's another way, instead of proportional editing and trying to scale it there, you can also just here uh, select select multiple, shift select, and then alt s to, to scale it along here. Anyways, now that we got that bit of um, logistics out of the way, let's actually, let's actually get this into track. So now we're going to start uh, downloading some programs. So... Um, the first program you want to download is uh, ReStudio, and then you can uh, download a. Uh, I I hate <laughs> I hate KitCom. Well, because I I don't know it. I guess you could download the zip and then. Uh, anyways, uh, once you once you actually get it to work, I. Uh, Sorry, is it is it done? I never know. Is it? Are, are we there yet? Are we? Are we good? Um, hopefully I'm not horribly doxing myself. I probably am. But I, uh, you'll get an exe here, and then basically you just I uh, launch this up from the executable file. I'm on build alpha point four five four four. Um, so this is an alpha tool, so there's going to be some limitations along with it that uh, currently it doesn't play nicely with, and we just have to go and accept it. But, uh, so the other alternative is, um, sorry, why are you downloading uh, uh, ReStudio? Uh, you can also download Brawlcrate. Um, and same thing here. I guess releases. Yeah, there, there's the thing. There's the thing. Anyways. Uh, and you get the AXC here. Uh, likewise, there's the releases, there's the releases. I'm dumb. Um, so yes, you can see my familiar with familiarity with GitHub, but uh, both of these are editors for Mario Kart Wii um, files. Um, specifically, the course model files, or the skybox files, or what have you. Uh, BRRES files, binary resource archive? Obviously, A doesn't work, but um, binary resource something. Um, but they, uh, that's how you, you know, 
get your actual model into the game is by using BRES files. So once you have, uh, you, you can create it from Brawlcrate uh, and you'll notice on the wiki, uh, creating custom tracks, you have model related and then creating your beer. <laughs> C tools is like a 2010 editor. Uh, don't don't use it. Um, it's pretty fast, but uh, it gives you a bajillion errors when you're doing stuff. Um, but if you just want something that's there, honestly, for test tracks, it might not be the worst thing ever. But uh, Re Studio is actually really quick as well, um, although there's its own limitations. Um, Actually, I take that back. C Tools has its own set of limitations that, uh, yes, don't don't use C Tools at all, ever, please. I I unfortunately used it. Um, let's put it that way. So uh, Brawl Crate and Brawl Box are essentially the same program. Um, Brawl Crate is slightly up to date. I have no idea what those fixes are. Sometimes you can get a model that works in Brawl Box, but not Brawl Crate, or vice versa. I don't know why. Uh, I just get both. Just, just because, but I use Brawl Crate because it's technically uh, more up-to-date. I have no idea what they changed, though. Um, so really, it shows you what you have to do to get it to work in Brawl Crate uh, or Brawl Box. Currently, um, ReStudio doesn't open uh, BRAS files uh, created with Brawl Crate, but uh, vice versa is not the case. I uh, Brawl Crate can't open stuff with ReStudio, so I'm most familiar with Brawl Crate, but uh, creating it in ReStudio is a lot faster, and then you can just tweak around some values. Whereas uh, if you just create it with Raw Crate, you have to tweak a lot, you know, just change a lot more values. Not tweaking, but just actually getting them into the right thing. Because Raw Crate was originally made for uh, Super Smash Brawls, or Brawl, or what have you. Um, that's why it's Brawl, yes. Um, so uh, there's no wiki page for the. Um, ReStudio, but it's pretty intuitive, um, and I, I lied, uh, so, well, first we'd open, and it's looking for, currently it's looking for an FBX or a DAE file, so how do we get that, uh, so it knows what to open? Um, well, we have to go back to our model, sorry, we're not, we're not quite done with this, we're gonna select everything, and we need to make sure that it is above this Y equals zero plane. This is important when you're making all of your tracks. You always have to have it over the y equals zero plane. Um, yeah, because there's just an automatic death plane there. And if you're obviously underneath it here, then you just continuously die over and over and over. And that's no fun for anyone. Um, unless it is funny, in which case all, I'm all for it. Um, so uh, then the next thing we want to do to get this ready to export is we have to make sure that our model is, uh, that our road's width is about 30 meters wide, uh, maybe 32 meters wide, uh, 25 meters is definitely on the small side of road, 35, I've seen some people uh, just use that as their base default of the road. I tend to use 30 meters for my default of the road. Uh, typically, uh, smaller tracks, I. Uh, you know, you never risk that. You never risk that being overscaled and boring. You just might have okay. Well, spear can't make this turn, and neither can flame runner. You know, uh, so it, 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 scaling is something that's there's no actual set standard on. And you just say okay, let's say 32 meters for my rib. Um, so how do we want to do that? We we'll, we can whale. Uh, we can. I have an add-on for this. Um, let's see. Blender measure tool. Uh, is that what it's called? Uh, measure it. Measure it tool. Oh, it's already. Oh, it already comes with Blender. Never mind. So you just go edit preferences, add ons, and then measure it. Measure it. And then the nice thing about this is you can select. Uh, you know, a face or an, an edge, and you can select maybe multiple of these, and I uh, select these, and then you can go in N, this panel, uh, the view tab, you can go to measure it tools, 
and then you can show and segment. And you can see right now that uh, these are all around three meters wide. We want these to be 32 meters wide, right? Or something like that. Uh, it looks like we have to actually go into object mode here to select these um, and get it to work. So then let's show these segments. So this is a bit wide, uh, but this is at a three meters. So we can basically just scale everything up by a power of 10. So you can S10. Um, oops, uh -huh, we forgot to do this. So hit A to select everything and then scale by 10. Um, and then you have to make sure, oh, look, we're below the Y equals zero plane. So let's just shift it up a bit. And you don't have to worry about your model not being like it being too large, unless it really actually is too large. Um, what, uh, what I'm trying to say by that is uh, if you go too far on the X or Y direction or the Z direction as well, too high up, then there can be issues with like online and items not knowing where to target. Um, it's just a larger value than the game can actually handle in its memory. Um, but you won't have any issues with that if you have like a normal size track, unless you're a man of Wii and you create empty space. Um, look it up, it's a pretty good track. Um, so, you know, you, you can see right now, this is 29 meters, this is 30 meters. Uh, and let's scale it up maybe to 32. Uh, although this is now 37, this is 32, this is 31. So you have to be aware, like this is the maybe the smallest point here. What does this segment look like? Okay, that's also 30 meters. That's good. Now this is this is a bit wide at 50 meters, but honestly, it when you have two things meeting together and we're going to have an immediate sharp turn afterwards, I'm not worrying about that being like overscaled, um, especially since if you look at how if you look at how long this is, like that's a pretty short street. Um, yeah, just less than two lengths of a road. So, you know, that's, that's not a big thing. Um, so now our model is above y equals zero. It is scaled properly. And now we can actually export it as a F FBX file. So we can export, uh, sorry, let me show that off the time. File, export, export as FBX. And then we are currently in our uh, Blender long form at textures folder. I'm actually going to say OK um, to put it in my textures folder. Uh, and we'll see later why. Uh, for ReStudio, you have to set the scale to 100. For Brawl Crate, you have to set the scale to 1. ReStudio, you have to switch the scale to 100. Brawl Crate, you have to set the scale to 1. So uh, we're just going to do that export as FBX. And then this is maybe the most stupid part of the whole uh, Mario Kart Wii creation process. FBX converter uh, on the wiki page, creating a BRES with Brawlbox. Autodesk FBX converter 2013.3. You have to get this program. I do not want, know why it is this specific and this stupid, but this is this is the de facto and <laughs> I do not know why. It's awesome. Um, so you use FBX Converter, FBX Converter 2013.3. And then you can go, uh, sorry, down here to add. And then you can go to your, uh, where is it? Tutorial Blender Long Form Textures, navigate to your FBX, and then change your destination format to a DAE. And then convert. Um, ReStudio can also read FBX files, but I uh, haven't tried it. And uh, for for Brawl Crate, you have to go through this FBX to DAE process through FBX Converter 2013. So now, if we go and we look at uh, our I guess custom tracks and our blended tutorial long form and our textures folder, you can see we have a .dae file right here. So for ReStudio, one particular thing that it has is that this DAE must be in the same uh, place as your textures. Uh, Brawl Crate does not have this issue, um, but it ha yeah, it just has to know to go out from here and look at all these textures. Um, that's, that's the quirk you have to 
uh, workaround, or at least one of the main quirks. Uh, some other quirks right now, as of alpha 5.4.4, is that it doesn't like PNG files, um, or not uh, JPG files, or JPEG. What's I, I, is there a difference? I think there's a difference. Um, and um, that if you have dots in your name. So if we had, um, for instance, river cliff dot zero one, uh, I'm sorry, dot zero one dot PNG, it would not know what to do with that. Uh, it would try reading point zero one as its own extension and get confused and throw errors. Or actually, I don't think. It gets confused and starts mapping around textures to different places, but that's neither here nor there. We have a DAE. Now we can actually go into ReStudio. You can set your settings to uh, have like the different theme. Uh, I like this one. And then you open and you navigate to your your texture, uh, or your your DAE. Sorry, textures folder, and then find the DAE. Uh, and this is this is the one, and we want to create a BRES file, BMD. I think that's a Super Mario Galaxy file. We're not going to use that. So now your Im importer settings. What do we want? Basically, defaults are fine. Cool, but I'm just going to explain them. So MIP maps. It automatically generates MIP maps, and what these do is uh, far textures, uh, but or you know. Textures far off in the distance have a lower level of detail. They're smaller in size. And then when you get closer, they go to their full strength. You can combine this with some sort of, like, the textures actually change as you get closer to them or farther away from them, uh, which can lead some to some cool effects. Um, I, here, these are all pretty self-explanatory. Um, oh, haha. <laughs> this is... Um, Sorry, actually, <laughs> we're, we're going to go through this FBX to DAE process again because uh, I, I forgot to do this and I always forget to do this. I literally always forget to do this. Uh, not figuratively, literally. If you go to this panel, this panel, the overlays panel, or not panel, drop down, then you click on face orientation. Ah, see? So, Mario Kart Wii, by default, only renders one side of a face. So, if you were to... You could have them all be uh, coal none, which means cutting none. So, it could render both sides, but that's going to take a lot of computational power when, in fact, we're never going to see the bottom of this. So, why would we bother to render this? So, what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode. We're going to select the faces that we want. Shift select, right? And then Alt N, and then flip. Alt N for normals. You can also probably go face here. It's somewhere in here. <laughs> but I uh, Alt N, and then flip. Alt N flip. You can also try to like A to select everything. Alt N recalculate outside, or uh, like recalculate inside, whatever. So that's one thing you can do. Uh, right now, it looks like we have some weird artifacts here. So let me just go and investigate what those are. So if I grab this out in the first place, you can see this is probably just a, our bad geometry here. Um, yeah, where this top face and bottom face. So if we actually go to the inside, yeah, you can see right here, we have, this is not quite lined up on the X axis. So we have this, uh, this t bush texture is right now going like into the road. So you can see there's there's some of that blue already matching up here. I guess actually it's just empty space. So the bottom of this doesn't doesn't match up. That's fine. Uh, we're, we're you're never gonna see that in game. Uh, and so we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about perfect geometry. So now we're gonna. Uh, so blue is actually sorry. Uh, let me explain what this means. So blue is that they're facing. That's the good side that you want. So now we're going to turn off overlays, or turn off face orientation in this overlays panel uh, because it's actually really annoying to look at. Uh, and if you also, sorry, uh, if you want to remove these, um, bring up the end panel, um, you can hide the segments. Uh, so yeah, you, you don't always have to have those segments enabled. Um, yeah. Anyways, so 
now we have our DAE that we actually want to use. So now let me just go through the process again. Um, so even though I messed up, like that's okay. We, we actually get to see the process one more time. So FBX, FBX, and we can just overwrite it. Uh, that's what that red shows is that you're overwriting it. And then I go to Autodex, Autodesk uh, 2013. I can remove the previous one. I can add, I can add the FBX from the same, same place. I can change the destination format to DAE and then I can convert. And then now I can go into ReStudio and I can uh, I, I open up ReStudio again. I open and let me get the DAE. So I, I don't think I emphasized that you should always be doing test versions. Or I didn't emphasize that enough. You always need to be doing test versions. One, because the scale of your model. Um, but two, because creating like these BRES files, if you notice one small mistake, then you have to basically do the whole process again. So you always want to keep it bare minimum uh, until at the very end when you finally you know polish up everything and spend those hours uh, to make it look good. Um, but uh, you always want to do test versions first so that you're not putting in extra work that you're just going to have to delete um, and throw away. So we want to create a new BRES model and default settings are fine here. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So right now my grass underscore dark, is it actually in here? It is. Oh, but it's a JPG image. Ah, that's why. So this is the this is the peculiarity that we have right now. Um, so I'm just gonna open it with paint.net and then I'm gonna file save as and then I'm gonna change it to a PNG and I'm gonna save. Okay, and I'm gonna go into Blender and uh, I need to change this texture reference from the JPG over into the PNG. Over to the PNG and then save it and file export. I'm, I'm so glad that we actually got to saw this, this peculiarity in action. Uh, FBX scale at 100, remember? Uh, yeah, scale at 100 for ReStudio, uh, one for Brawl Crate. Uh, FBX converter, remove, add, uh, FBX and source destination DAE. Convert, convert. Now we can open up ReStudio. We can huh, close and reopen ReStudio. Uh, file open and let's navigate to our DAE file again. Uh, DAE. What does DAE stand for? I have no idea. Uh, and it worked. So now we can drag this out. And we can go here and we can uh, w A, S, and D to move around and see our course. And you can also tell, tell if your track is scaled too small when you move around and it, you know you start flying all over your model or if you start going around and you like are traveling at a snail's pace, you've probably scaled it by a factor of 100 incorrectly. So this, this looks correct. Uh, you can see here we have our materials. Uh, and you can change it to like vertical tabs, and then you can change around some of the some of the stuff. I have absolutely no idea what any of these mean. Um, actually, this is this is the culling, so you can show both sides of the face. Um, but right now, we just uh, front side of our face is fine. Uh, actually, I do recommend for test versions to have all of these materials uh, to see everything. So that way, um, like you're not gonna cause any lag, um, but you're just gonna allow for more visibility and what have you. Um, let's, just, let's just do that. And then we have our BRES file. So file, uh, save. Uh, wow, is this a, what's that? What did I do? What is that? Oh, that's this. Wow, oh, so you can, I, I, I think I saw something where you can do uh, like this on tablet. All right, yeah, let's, let's start to making, <laughs> interesting. Anyways, uh, file, save as, and into the, t uh, now we're just gonna take it out of the textures folder. B 
because we're a BRES file and the DAE needs to reference the textures. The BRES, it already met, have it, has it packed in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're gonna call this uh, course model. And this name is important. Um, why is it important? Because that's how Mario Kart Wii knows, oh, this thing should be interpreted as this. So if I was to call it Bob, Mario Kart Wii doesn't know what to read Bob up BRES. But if we call it course model, then it does know what to call this. So uh, let me show you one really cool website that you're going to use all the time, or I use all the time. Uh -huh. Uh, <laughs> no clip dot website. Sorry, I ha I have this as a um, bookmark in my Firefox, which I'm not pulling up because I have well, work on there that I want to keep. But I, you can look at Mario Kart Wii tracks, um, and W A S and D to just look around, scroll up and down. Uh, you can also like do Z to hide this, um, and it's generally just pretty cool. So you can see right here. As we get closer to, uh, as we get closer to this, it fades in and out. That's myth maps, and uh, wow, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but anyways, I'm getting distracted. So if I now go in into my, uh, sorry, please, um, computer, help. Thank you. Um, I now have a BRES file, and. You can actually drag and drop these BRES. Oh, nope, that's the wrong place. Aha, uh -huh. I just doxed myself. Nice. Um, if I remember, I will remember to not dox myself in the edit. Um, so you can just drag and drop in here and WC and D and shift to go faster and uh, I. And Blender is to go slower. I. Uh, as I'm moving around, I'm I'm noting that this might be overscaled, um, just how it feels. Um, I might be wrong. Uh, we'll see how it plays in game. But you can see that yes, I do see the backside of this face because we we did enable colon. Um, likewise, we also have this bottom face there, which we won't ever see in game, so there's probably no reason for it to exist. Um, but that's just to confirm. Yes, it is actually of the right scale, and things look about right. So now let's go into Brawl Crate. Um, or brawl box doesn't matter file open if you were to create a new one you'd go new archives brs resource pack and then you'd right click to import a model and then you'd find your dae um uh, tutorial track long form and i'd find that dae and then you'd have these settings i uh, these are the settings that you want so this is like the coal Right, coal mod or coal outside that's cutting outside. Actually, I think you want to cut outside, cut inside. Uh huh. Um, and then you'd you'd have stuff. You'd need to rename this as course. I uh, and then you'd also need to import your textures and do stuff there. Uh, Re Studio automatically does this, so I'm not going to go into. Uh, creating it with Brawl Crate, but that's a preview of what you'd be doing, uh, and it's also on this wiki, uh, wiki page here. But, um, no, uh, but I do want to open it. File, open, and I'm going to go to my, oops, tutorial blender, and now I have this BRS file, and you can see I have this 3D models called Course, and I can open it. I have different materials, and each material is linked to a different uh, texture. You can see here's the mapping here. Uh, here's some of the settings, uh, and these are all. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say these are all self-explanatory, but they're really not. Um, the only things you have to worry about. Uh, this is for mipmap stuff, which Free Studio automatically does correctly. This is uh, scaling, which can be useful if you forget to scale in Blender. And then later on, like, oh, I want to scale it. Uh, or like a water texture um, and scale it there. Um, and then here, uh, one other thing that you're going to have to worry about for Brawl Crate and specifically, uh, this sh shader. So each of these currently is linked to shader zero. And if you go over to shader zero, then uh, you can uh, see that this stage right now has multiplied by one for this color output. 
you can I uh, it by default it's set to multiply by four which is way too bright um and yeah just all the colors of your textures are multiplied by four and it's really blinding so you want to change this to multiply by two or multiply by one i'm a multiply by two guy myself but uh some people swear by multiply by one preference is yours um i'm gonna keep it uh at multiply by one just because i don't feel like changing it and you can see here's our textures here which are right now um 512 by 512 they need to be powers of two so restudio will actually not allow you to con con to continue if your power, uh, textures are not powers of two brawl create will let you continue uh these do need to be powers of two and 512 is actually really uh is probably actually too much detail um just in terms of lag and you know how much of this detail you really need to look at um so i'd probably downsample this to like 256. um for example uh you can have 1024 with uh only like well you can have it for anything that you want but like that's at the very upper end of the wii so you'd only do that for light maps or stuff but i uh, yeah the game just does not handle 2048 textures or, or you know anything above one 1024 nope doesn't doesn't load so uh it, basically that's oversimplified but that's that's the gist um so yeah you can see that yes this shader uh has this multiply by one these uh materials uh all currently cold none which is meaning that we're not gonna cut any inside or outside face um and here's some shader stuff i uh, and if if free studio did it correctly then all these materials are set properly i'm a bit suspicious about this so we'll actually see in game if that's if that's correct or not it might be currently rendering as transparent um you know just guessing wrong if it's transparent or not but i'm not familiar enough to say um so actually i don't think we changed anything here um let's change let's just save it anyways um cool so now we have a course model if we really wanted to we could look at it right now um if for instance uh if i go so here's something uh if uh for dolphin so if you have your iso you can uh, extract i uh, so rmc extract is where i put my um if i go into the command line i can go wit to bring up wims iso tools um which you can go to that website and download and then wit extract and then a you know wherever your path to your dot iso is and you also need to give it a output path and you need to call it whatever or uh, I'm, in my case i called it rmc extract and then files and then a uh, race and then your courses and this is the list of the default mario kart Wii courses what you can do is you can go let's take um sorry maybe i'm getting ahead of myself but if you look at look at all these these are scs files right these are the actual courses that that mario kart reloads so um soon uh, i'm going to show you how to pack all these things together into an SCS. Um, so you can take one of these courses and then you can extract it. I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you all this. Um, and then you can replace the, the default course model.brs, you know, Luigi circuit course model. And then you can just impute your own uh, course model that we just created.brs and then repack it and then put it in this, this race course, files race course. Uh, and just put it in here and then you can just boot up dolphin and uh or just your my stuff folder and ctgp or revolution what you know whatever have you it doesn't have to be ctgp but whatever distribution that has my stuff or dolphin and you can just play it there um i'm gonna i like to just actually have you know collision first off um especially since it's such a simple model like there's there's nothing that i need to test um but sometimes it can be helpful to ha to test um your course model separately than your um kmp which is your checkpoints and object stuff in case there are crashes 
um, and you don't know if it's located, you know, where it's located. So you can replace just the course model of Luigi Circuit with your own. And if it loads there, then it has to be in your KMP object or KMP file. So um, that's a way of finding crashes. We just made our course model be erased. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna we're gonna do some KCL stuff. I uh, yeah. So we're gonna create a new version of our of our thing. We're gonna call it uh, test KCL um, one. Sure. Um, so now, uh, sorry, the sh control shift S is what I use to create a new version. And I obviously saved right beforehand, so the previous version what had the mo most up to date, whatever. So now we want this to have wall, right? Um, actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I won't tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do it. So uh, these we all want it to be road. Uh, one thing that we have to do is we just have to go here and we have to remove the shading on these. You have to go and you have to go into the shading tab and you just have to uh, select it and then X to delete. And you have to go here and shading X to delete. And now once you're here, you can, uh, actually maybe this was the wrong way of doing it, but uh, you can see this material, you know, the same material doesn't have any texture anymore. So let's give it a blue um, and let's go into material preview so we can actually see what we're doing here. Let's give it a light blue color. So this is gonna be a road. And maybe let's call this road as well. Uh, then we also want this to be road, okay? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna select, really right now we could also just go here and we could navigate to this. So what did I do? I just took the default material, which is currently empty, and then I went over, and actually, for clarity, I'm just gonna rename this road, this material road, and then I go in here, and I now say I want to select road. Aha. Uh -huh. So now this is all road. Cool. It's, you know, it's not road, but it also is road. So now this. Uh, I want this to be wall. So I'm gonna call this wall just for ease of looking at it I can call this wall and I'm gonna make me give this a dark blue color this is just the default color that I use yeah um and then we say okay I have wall I've read but what if I want like a jump or something so you'd maybe go here and you'd maybe control R to add a loop cut and then you'd maybe have this select this plane and have this be trickable. Or you could just have this whole thing being trickable. The choice is yours. Um, I like this, and uh, here's a, you can also do GG to edge slide, right? Uh, and maybe that's a good way of, good way of doing that. And then I say, okay, I want this to have, I want this to be a jump. So I can P to separate this uh, thing in edit mode, and I'm still in edit mode. So I'm gonna tab out of edit mode, and now I have this new object with I can zoom into um, and do all this stuff with. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this road slot. Notice it's not updating anything else. So if I went and I remove the road slot here, well then that's a that's a bigger deal because you know that's like, <laughs> actually I want that. So I, uh, you can also like add a new material, create a new one, call it something like jump and then you can go and you can change this base color to something like a pink and it's not showing up because you have to either you have to either assign it here and tab into edit mode select the face that you want select the thing that you want it to go to material that you want it to reference and then assign or you can also uh, if you didn't do that you could also um, just remove this road because this is it's the only thing referencing you know this is the only bit of geometry referencing this if you remove road, it automatically defaults to jump. Nice. And this has to be separate. Uh, yeah, so in the course model, you basically want, uh, uh, so actually I don't remember if I mentioned this, but uh, each, sorry, what's it called? 
each texture that you have should be its own object. And the same thing is true here. So this jump has its corresponding material slash texture thing, and it's an, it's an own object here. So I actually want these to join together. What did I just do? I selected these two, this plane and this plane, which both have the same exact road material. And then I shift click and I control J to join it. Control J to join. And now these are of the same object. So the Mario Kart Wii is pretty good at recognizing, oh, hey, that's, you know, these are of the same object. These have the same, uh, you know, material and it knows what to do with it. So we have our road, we have our uh, jump, and we have our wall. I, if, if I didn't cover uh, the t tools that you need uh, for accurately doing KCL, um, don't fret, we will be actually expanding out this track, you know, adding off-road, adding uh, cliff walls around it, uh, adding some lakes. So uh, hopefully I'll cover it there. Um, if I don't get to here, but basically the premise is you always want to have, you know, every, every new thing should be its own, own thing here. Sorry. Every, uh, like road material, uh, should be its own, should be its own object. Um, and then you can separate things out by s selecting these and, you know, P to separate by selection. And then you can uh, assign this a new new material and maybe say this is like a jump pad and you give it a green thing and then you remove the default road and you now have a jump pad cool except we don't want that so i'm going to remove it um i also want these to be of the same object nice so uh basically my kcl is done uh pretty much <laughs> pretty much so now we're going to go file uh export as FBX. And this time <laughs> we're also going to use FBX converter. Uh, but most importantly, your scale should be 1, not 100, which is really annoying. It's actually insanely annoying. But you just have to remember for my course model with ReStudio, it's 100. For my course model with Brawl Crate and my KCL, the scale is 1. You just have to, you just have to remember it. And right now I'm just selecting mesh. Um, so that way I don't also export around like my camera or whatever, does not matter. If, if you're doing it with OBJ, uh, you have to like mess around with these settings and whatever. Don't do it with OBJ. So right now we have our tutorial blender test version.fbx, but we actually want it as our test uh, KCL. And you can also like do this with spaces. I'm just doing it with underscores because, um, because reasons. Um, so FBX, and then I'm going to open up FBX Converter, our favorite. Uh, I'm going to remove whatever was in there previously. And then I'm going to add this FBX KCL that we just added. And then I'm going to convert it to an OBJ. Uh, and then we're going to use another tool to convert this OBJ into a KCL. So uh, we do want it to triangulate. Um, that's one of the things. Uh, <laughs> back in the C Tools day, you had to triangulate your model. Anyways. Um, Anyways, so we, we now have an OBJ. Awesome. So if we go over to our um, uh -huh, and our textures folder here, we should have our test KCL OBJ. Awesome. Now we need to encode it. We need to say, OK, well, we actually called it jump in here. Or we called it like road and wall and road.001 up here. But we actually want like. How does it know road should be mapped with road? So that's what we're going to do now. And we're going to use this using uh, something called flag files. And though, uh, oh, and I, if you go here, uh, wiki, and then you go to uh, flag files. Let's see if I can just search a flag. KCL flag, there we go. Um, so this describes how you match what to what. Uh, so for example, this is your type. So I want road to be zero, zero. And then you can go in here. So we're going to be using uh, type A. And uh, actually we might use type F. Doesn't matter. Um, sorry. But then this is our variant. This is our variant that we want. Um, 
so so yes um sorry i totally blanked here uh but this kcl flag uh page you know this this should be bookmarked and saved as an html page so that way if the wiki is down you still have reference to what's what um but what we're going to do is we're going to find our uh, obj and we are going to right click in here open in terminal and this should bring up the command prompt and then you can do wims uh, kcl tools which automatically comes with wims scs tools i think um and then we're gonna uh create flag file cff create flag file and then uh, uh oh my goodness oh yeah and then we actually need to specify our obj and we can just drag and drop nice so now we have a flag file and you can just open this in notepad um and then we can see here's our road r roads dot zero zero one or underscore which replaces with and wall so i uh, i if you go back here this is our at the top right road road dot zero zero one and wall same thing here so what we're going to do is first we're going to create a script so uh a is actually the way to go but i don't really uh actually i do know that um wow i just learned something new today so we're going to do a files uh for the first time but it's okay because i know what i'm doing um i think uh so we're going to create a macro uh just for our own convenience so we're going to start recording then we're going to uh sorry we're going to select this end we're going to delete then we're going to oh nope <laughs> actually let me just uh stop recording i'm a failure and i did it wrong and then we're going to go here, macro, start recording, delete stuff, and then go here, and delete stuff, and then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go to the end of it, and then I'm going to stop recording, and then I can just uh, play back, control shift P, and boom, it automatically does it. That's really nice, well, re really nice when you have a large amount of materials. Um, Obviously, here is just three materials. You can probably just do it by hand, um, but that macro is really useful for later on. So right now, we have this is your variant. So if you go to the road, road you can see this is zero zero zero. If we wanted slippery road, we would go into our flag file, and then we'd change this to be slippery road, or maybe this is off road. Or maybe this is boost ramp or maybe this is flip trick ramp so we would just want this to be road and then what variant of road do we want we want if we go over to click on road this is uh, dirt with no ground effects um, you can read up more on what's the slot uh, I think that's like DK jungle parkway um, but we're just not gonna have any ground effects so we're gonna have two our base effect as two. So that means if you look at this uh, this A function, this is the type A, this is the basic effect. This is your variant that you're having. So this is your collision, this is your road, this is your boost, this is your flip track. And then this is like, oh, this is like a dirt road. This is a gra uh, grass road, this is a snow road. So we're gonna have this as effect two because we want dirt with no ground effects. So we go into our flag file and we set this last bit to two. Nice. Now this wall, if you go, uh, zero C, <laughs> um, but if you go uh, here and then you're like, wall, 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 this is, this is wall. And you go here. Ah, nice. This is wall. And it's actually a bush. They've, they've already co coded in bushes and that's because of Pete Gardens. I, uh, but you, you, you can, you can get some workings like, oh, rubber, huh? You know, that, that almost, or it, it might be used in some, you know, Mario Kart track somewhere, but that's, that's neat to know. But anyways, we have this, uh, zero C and then we want the bush, which is five. Uh, so we're going to go into our flag file and then zero C and then we want variant five. And now this road zero, zero one, which I've been ignoring 
is actually our jump thing here. So we just want this to be trickable road. Um, yeah, we, we don't want anything uh, special. Like if, if you did a flip trick ramp here, which uh, if you look at was flip trick ramp, it is, uh, or a jump pad, these boost ramp and jump pad, these are not what you want. These are like uh, slow ramps. So the BC3 slow ramps or uh, yeah, Ghost Valley 2 slow ramp. Here's the bouncy mushrooms, um, which is actually pretty fun, but uh, that's not what we want. What we actually want is we want, uh, you can see here, um, really, wait. Wait, how does it do this? Ah, okay. So it turns out I don't know what I'm doing at all. Nice. Um, yeah, for type A. I, so I'm just going to go back to what I know, type F. Um, <laughs> apologies, this is not the most polished, uh, polished part. So we're going to actually say this is F, and then the F structure looks like, looks like this. Um, and maybe it's 0x002. Zero 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 I think that's how it looks like. Actually, I can probably just, yeah. Let's just do this the, do this the good old way. Yeah, so I was right. So we're gonna use this f function because that's the way I know, and apparently I don't know any other thing. Um, and we're gonna start recording a macro, and then we're gonna delete here, and we're gonna go here, we're gonna delete here, and we're gonna go back out here, and macro, stop recording, and then control shift P, uh, Control Shift P, Control Shift P. Same exact thing. I uh, this is our road, which is variant or the which is collision effect zero zero, and then it's I uh, type or variant is zero. Um, this last bit indicates what um, what's going on. So actually, we wanted it to what two was for a dirt road with uh, no ground effects. Yep, and our wall was zero C and its uh, variant was five um, for the bush. And then for this uh, trickable road, we want it to be road, but then we want it to be trickable. And so for this F function, you can just hit one. So um, yeah, this is your flag file. So now next time when you export, you know, you, you make some model changes here, as long as you have these, you know, named the exact same thing, I, you know, I, I create maybe some new, new road over here, and I scale it up, and then I get it to road. Right now, if I was to add it, there'd just be this extra plane thing in the flag file, and then I could add like, um, for example, plane equals f, and I could have this this way, right? And this would just be a default road, um, or you can also have um, go in here and then shift click and then control J and it merges into road. If it was to merge into plane, okay, then that's, you know, if you did it the other way around, you can control J and then this is plane and then you'd have to change your thing from road to plane. But, um, that's just a bit of, bit of whatever, um, not needed. Sorry, shift right click to move this 3D cursor around. But, um, so we have our flag file. Cool. So this is how you encode. I want this uh, object with this name, and it has that one material. And then I want everywhere that object to have this flag file. Um, so it knows what KCL value to use. So now we're gonna save it, control S. And now here's where the magic happens. We just created the flag file, and now we're actually going to encode WKCLT and code. Actually, before I do that, that should be a four wall. Okay, so what what did I just do there? Uh, so these walls right now, it, it doesn't matter for our track in particular, but um, if you set this to four, like this is one for trickable, you know, this is the trickable bit, uh, but if you set it to four, then uh, I, what's it called? Um, uh, if you've played CTGP before and you've played Incendia Castle, 
um, or another uh, bean track, you know about bean corners. If you take try to take a turn too tight, you get hit by some wall from underneath the track, and it's sad, and you you cry. Um, this this takes care of that problem. Uh, you can also like manually lower the walls um, in the KCL itself. So, for example, you can uh, uh, and you know in our case it doesn't matter, but you can actually literally lower these walls GZ, you know, move it on the z-axis so that ca this KCL does not have to be aligned with the visual model. So, for example, you can just like start creating uh, you know random wall stuff out in the middle of nowhere. You can do that if you want. Um, but that's not what we're what we're doing. Um, okay, uh, sorry. What did I just do? Uh, I realized that I actually haven't shown this before. Shift D. That's how you duplicate. Sorry, we've gone this long, but I haven't showed you how to duplicate. Now you know how to duplicate. Shift D. Um, delete. Uh, shift select and delete. X to delete. Anyways, now you just learned duplication. Aren't you glad that you stayed around this long? Um, so. Uh, yeah, this, instead of manually lowering your walls, uh, this automatically makes them quote-unquote weak walls. Um, yeah, which is which is nice. So now we're going to go WKCLT encode, and then you find your um, associated OBJ, and you just drag it and drop in here, and then it knows to, you know, this is named the exact same thing as the flag file, so it knows which one it should reference. And you just created your first KCL. Um, you can also uh, remove uh, face down or something. Um, I don't have the command off the top of my head, but I, it is pretty well documented in the KCL thing. So you can also have like, um, actually, let me find it. Um, uh, WKCLT. So there's a bunch of functions that it has, and I. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> where is it? Literally, where is it? Commands. Um, huh. I can't find it anymore. But I, uh, you can. Yeah, you can say I want the options so it gives me a really good KCL or high um, high poly count essentially um, or like remove face down uh, equals true is that the syntax no okay uh, let's see remove face down true I have no idea what I'm doing anyways doesn't matter we have just created our KCL awesome this is where the KCL shows up. We're gonna uh, move it to here, and we're gonna call this course. And uh, yeah, now we have our KCL, and we actually have our course model. Um, you can try this out in game, except you can't because I haven't shown you how to do that yet. Uh, next time, we're going to create the KMP, uh, which is going to be a checkpoints and what have you. And then we're gonna bundle this up into a course and then we're going to test our yeah we're going to test our course all right i'll see you then